If you want to sell 3D models, you need the right nozzle and the right material. If you're still printing with a 0.4 nozzle, you're losing money every single day. And your printer stays just a hobby. And yes, today I'm giving you a 3D model with a full commercial license completely for free in exchange for your subscription. A true win-win. In the free 3D software blender, I designed the perfect model, ideal for both the video and for selling. At the end, we'll take a look at the full production costs and the realistic selling price, so we can calculate the profit margin. Compared to the last video with the silicon casting molds, today's product requires almost no manual labor. Your 3D printer does most of the work. Today the Bamboo Lab P2S with a 0.4 nozzle is competing against the H2S with a 0.8 high flow nozzle. I'm very sure that most of you don't own any additional nozzle besides the standard 0.4. And that's a huge disadvantage, which I highly recommend fixing as soon as possible. Swapping the nozzle now takes less than a minute, while on many other printers it's still a bit of a hassle. Besides comparing the two nozzles, we'll also check the difference between the most commonly used filaments, PLA and PETG. I'm using matte PLA and for many products, if you want them to look premium, you should definitely try matte filament if you haven't yet. With matte filament, the layer lines are also less visible than with standard PLA. For PETG, I've planned something special. Today we're printing translucent filament and taking a look at how it looks with light. I loaded the model into the slicer and first adjusted a few settings. Later I'll change some details, like the filament purchase price, so we can get an accurate cost overview. But now it's about the 0.8mm nozzle, and here things get interesting. On the first attempt, the slicer doesn't recognize the walls correctly. Sure, you could theoretically print a part like this in vase mode, which would also eliminate the seam, but that doesn't work here, because there's an internal connection at the bottom. So we have to stay in the standard printing mode. If the slicer doesn't recognize the walls, or calculates them inconsistently, sometimes one wall, then suddenly two, you should definitely switch the line width engine under quality from classic to arachne. This is a very important setting for models like this. With arachne, the slicer recognizes the walls cleanly and prints variable wall thicknesses. It's an amazing feature, especially for smooth, consistent outer walls. And for models with wall thicknesses that don't perfectly match your nozzle diameter. Let's load some filament into the AMS system. I'm using the exact same filament twice running in parallel on my two 3D printers. And while they're printing, I want to tell you something important about bigger nozzles. Like a 0.8mm nozzle compared to the standard one. With default settings and the same print speed, the 0.8 nozzle uses about 4 times more material in the same amount of time than the 0.4. I made an illustration for that and that's exactly why we can't print very fast with such big nozzles. Even though the high flow nozzle in the Bamboo Lab presets shows 500 mm per second, it's still recommended to print slower, because PLA needs good cooling, especially on overhangs. In general, you can increase your nozzle temperature a bit. Comparing the two default settings, the 0.4 nozzle needs two layers to reach a height of 0.4 mm, and each layer is printed twice because of the standard two walls. You reach the same volume with the 0.8 nozzle in just one layer and one wall, which saves a huge amount of time. As an example, I slice both nozzles with default settings but at the same speed, 200 mm per second, and the difference is obvious. By the way, just like in my last two videos, in the next one I'll also show you how you can significantly raise the value of your prints with a bit of extra effort. Here we have the two finished parts side by side. This model has the same wall thickness, but it was printed with only one wall, making it much faster. And this nice piece here was printed with the 0.4 nozzle, but with two walls and way more layers. I noticed something on this model. Who can spot it? Perfect. I'll optimize that for you right away so you don't need test prints. I didn't manually set the seam, so in some areas you can see slightly larger holes where the seam starts. Now about the lamp. What does it cost and where can you order it? The good thing is if you buy a few of them, there are tons of 3D models on MakerLab made specifically for this lamp. 
Since the lamp from Bamboo Lab costs 10 euros and 40 cents, which is really expensive, I searched for the exact same one on AliExpress and ordered a pack of 10. That brings the price down to 1 euro 80 per lamp. And don't worry, it has the exact same dimensions for all K001 models on MakerLab. The lower lamp base was printed as well. I printed this one with the same nozzle because the H2S was busy. This time I manually set the seam. Run the cable through the opening and the lamp fits perfectly inside. Press it in and twist slightly. Time for the light test. After turning it on I left a bit of light in the background but you can still clearly see how much each lamp lets through. It would be brighter with white filament of course. With the manually placed seam you can barely see it. But with the default seam it's extremely visible. That's why I'll reprint this part later. Just set one seam from top to bottom right where the layers always meet. For the 0.8 nozzle the model had openings that were too small so I quickly adjusted it in blender to make the basket pattern larger. In the slicer you can see the difference. Perfect for the big nozzle. Finish printing and the next light test can begin. And yes it's a small bedside lamp that won't get very bright especially not with matte PLA. But it does its job. Here's the comparison between the two models. Which one do you like more? And don't forget. We'll later print this in transparent PETG which lets much more light through. That's when things get really interesting. I got straight to it and made three prints for you. The first two different temperature and speed. The third one was printed with cooling completely off. Because with transparent filament it's recommended to disable cooling so the layers fuse better. And of course the fewer layers the more light can pass through. In my three test prints I couldn't see any difference. On the Bamboo Lab website you can download the full presets for this filament for your slicer. Here we have the first model printed with the downloaded settings. I only adjusted the speed a bit. Don't worry the lower insert will also be printed with this filament. And doesn't this look good? I think it looks really beautiful. That's a big advantage in the 3D printing business. Most people don't dare to use anything other than PLA and even fewer try other nozzles. I told you it would be brighter. And it definitely is. I can't show it exactly as it looks in real life because the camera overexposes the light but it looks really nice. Warm pleasant light in a very cheap homemade night lamp. The transparent PETG costs 22 euros and 99 cents per kilogram. With a realistic order quantity of 10 spools mixed with PLA or other colors if needed as long as the total is 10 spools. To qualify for the discount shipping is free. Through discounts and Maker World points I usually end up paying about 50% of the regular price. So approximately 11 euros and 50 cents per kilogram. One kilogram of material yields around 14 lamps with some leftover filament. This results in material cost of roughly 78 cents per lamp. Combined with the kit 001 LED module at 1 euro 80. The total comes to about 260 per unit. Including electricity and normal wear on the 3D printer realistic production costs are around 3 euro per lamp plus a few minutes of work time. This calculation does not apply only to this specific lamp model but also to similar products with comparable production costs. Unexpected factors can always arise but overall 3G printing offers solid profit margins. Especially considering the clean and straightforward nature of the work. The real challenge is positioning your product effectively against the competition. What do you think is a realistic selling price for such a lamp?